Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing well and as promised we are back with a video and today we are going to talk about all the types of headlights available in the market and which one is the best for you. But before we proceed ahead don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so that you never miss an update from Rev Explorers and you can also get in touch with us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. So before we start I would like to tell you that the video is divided into multiple sections and if you want to skip to any of the sections you can find the timeline links in the description and if you have any queries in the video or after the video you can always shoot your questions in the comment section below or you can catch up with us on Instagram or Facebook. We should start with the type of optical systems or the housing of the headlamps that are usually used in the vehicles. One is reflector and the other one is projector. So the reflectors are fairly simple. They have a reflector mirror which helps to reflect the light coming out from the headlamp onto the roads. Whereas in the projectors also you get a reflector inside the lens. So what you see on the outside is the lens and behind that lens is a reflector mirror that again reflects the light from the headlamp and projects it on the road. Now let's talk about all the types of headlamps available in the market. So there are five types of headlamps available. The first one are the tungsten lamps. The second one are tungsten halogen lamps which are also called as halogen headlights. Third one are the HIDs or high intensity discharge. The fourth one are the LEDs and the fifth one are laser lights. So let's start talking about the tungsten headlight. Tungsten headlamps were the first electric headlamps introduced in the vehicles. They had vacuum or inert gas atmosphere inside the bulb and had a fairly short life. Also the lumen intensity was low. That means the brightness coming out of these bulbs were very low. Now these days they are not really used but you can get an understanding by seeing your tail lights where you get indicators and brake lights as these lamps. Although the lamps used in headlights were of higher wattage like 35 or 50 watt whereas the bulbs that are used in your tail lights are more of 5 or 10 watt. So these lamps were discontinued and the second generation came in. And the second generation was called as the halogen headlamps or tungsten halogen headlamps. Now, as already said, these are the upgraded and advanced versions of the tungsten headlamps. They have halogen instead of vacuum or inert gas inside the bulb. And with these headlamps coming into the market, we had new standards of headlamp socket fittings like the H1, H3, H4, H7, H11, etc. So these socket numbers are nothing but an understanding to the industries of the standards of the fitting as well as the rear socket of the headlamp. Also there is a limitation with the halogen headlamps that is you do not find much variety of color temperatures in these headlamps. Although you might find few of the headlamps having a blue reflective filter on the glass but that won't change the color temperature much. Like the halogen H4 headlamp that I have with me has a slightly blue tint on it but that won't change much of a color temperature like you can do in other headlamps. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of the halogen headlamps. So first of all the headlamps are very cost effective, easy to install, have regular bulb design and have a standard beam pattern. On the other hand they heat up easily, they have a shorter lifespan, low brightness and they waste a lot of energy in the form of heat. Now let's talk about the third type of headlamps available in the market. These are called as HIDs, high intensity discharge or xenon headlamps. Unlike the tungsten and halogen headlamps, the HIDs produce light with the help of an electric arc. In the center that you see right now is the arc chamber where the chemistry happens. The HIDs have a higher brightness than the halogen headlamps but due to this higher brightness what happens is the beam pattern is small so you need to increase the size of the HID to compensate for the beam pattern which is not an issue because we have that much space inside the headlight housing and the best part about HIDs are that they are available in a variety of color temperatures which is easily achieved 
by changing the chemical composition inside the HID tube. The complexity kicks in when you are installing the HID because your HIDs cannot be powered directly from the batteries of your bikes or cars. You need to install a ballast. Now ballast is a device which converts your battery power into 23,000 AC high voltage to fire up the xenon gas. It completely depends on the ballast, how quickly the HID starts, how reliable it is and how solid the power output is. On an average, an HID can take up to 8 to 12 seconds to reach the maximum power output. And as you can see, the HIDs are usually single beam, which is not a problem for sockets like H7 and H11. However, for sockets like H4, which are dual beam setup, an electromagnetic solenoid is involved. Now this solenoid, when energized, sucks the HID bulb inside the housing. So that means when your HID is up, it acts as a low beam. And when the HID is sucked down, it acts as a high beam. But to control this, you need to install a relay wire harness, which means that the HID can be a system of two to three devices comprising of the HID bulb, a ballast and the relay wire harness. Let's quickly talk about the pros and cons of the HID. The advantages of HID are they have a higher brightness, longer lighting distance and more color choices. However, on the other hand, they have a higher cost than halogens. They are not very easy to install and they might cause CAN bus problems in few of the cars. Now, if you don't know what a CAN bus problem is, I'll just give a brief intro to what CAN bus is. CAN bus are nothing but high speed networks inside the cars that require high quality wiring. So when you install an HID, there might be a poor wiring issue or a bad terminal connection, which can create a CAN bus problem. So let's quickly jump on to the fourth type of headlights available in the market, the LED headlights. LEDs are the new trends in the headlamp market. Almost all the manufacturers nowadays are fitting LED headlamps in their vehicles. With the BS4 in the market and the compliance for daytime running lamps, it was necessary to switch from halogens to LEDs. And we saw LEDs coming in almost all the two-wheelers. Also, many of the cars now have all LED headlamps. And this is because LEDs are long-lasting. They have a higher brightness and a very low power consumption. Unlike HIDs or halogens, LEDs do not involve any chemical reaction. It is just electricity passing through a PN junction diode, which emits light. Now the question arises, what about the people who have their vehicles with the traditional halogen headlamps in a reflector or a projector setup? Well, for those also, you get aftermarket LED headlamps. If it was 2016, I would have said that you should not think of LEDs because it might not fit your beam patterns, especially not in the projectors. And hence, the HIDs were more reliable alternative to the halogens, especially for the projectors. But today, LEDs have evolved a lot and you can easily get a suitable LED lamp for your reflector or your projector. And over here, I have the halogen headlamp and the LED headlamp. And if you see closely, both of them are almost identical. The size is almost the same. I'm not talking about the main size of the unit, but the bulb size that comes inside the reflector. And if you see that there is a cap for the low beam in the halogen bulb and the same cap is there on the LED for the low beam. Similarly, the high beam is almost equally distant from the low beam on the LED. So this is what you have to see that your LED is suitable for your reflector or projector. It should resemble your halogen bulb. And the best part is like HIDs, the LEDs are also available in variety of color temperatures starting from 3000 Kelvin to 10,000 Kelvin. And to change the color temperature, the manufacturers use yellow phosphor filter on the LEDs. So the intense the filter is, the more warmer color light you'll get. And the less filter used, you'll get more cooler color light. And just like halogens, 
LEDs are very easy to install and you will find that either the LEDs have their circuitry inside the bulb itself or it is a small box hanging out of the LED. Also, the LEDs are very simple. For a single beam, you just get two LEDs, one on each side. And for a dual beam like this one, you get four LEDs, two on one side and two on the other side. First two are for the low beam and the second two are for the high beam. And as I already said, the only thing to keep in mind while purchasing a LED headlight is that it should resemble your halogen bulb so that you get the best beam pattern. The OEM fitted LED bulbs, however, do not have this issue because they come fitted with their own custom designed reflectors or projectors. The only problem with them is if there is any fault, the whole unit has to be replaced, which is a bit expensive. Now let's quickly check out the pros and cons of the LED headlights. As we all know, the LEDs have high brightness, they are highly efficient and have a longer lifespan. On the other hand, they need a cooling system. They do not have a standard yet in the market. The LEDs might also get you into CAN bus problems in some cars. Now let's talk about the fifth and the last type of headlights available in the market. The laser headlights. This is fairly a new term in the headlight world, but it is the emerging technology in the market. The lasers are said to have a higher brightness than the LEDs by using as much as half the energy of an LED. Inside a laser headlight, there is a tube and at its end, the laser is fired up which hits the phosphor which then emits light, just like an LED. The difference is that laser is super directional and it goes out in one beam straight ahead. The laser headlight was first developed by Audi at the 24 hours Le Mans. And this technology has been used in the high-end cars like BMW i8, Rolls-Royce Phantom. But don't worry, you do get aftermarket laser headlights which look similar to the LED headlights but this thing sticking out is no more there in the laser headlight. You just get a lens on the top and the laser light headlight is only this much. But the sad part is that the lasers cannot be used in our conventional reflectors, projectors and fog lamps. They require a specially designed optical system to give their optimum performance. So do not bother yourself in purchasing one of the laser headlights. I will put a link in the description. You can go ahead and check it out. But there is no use of buying it because it won't work with our traditional reflectors, projectors and fog lamps. So let's talk about the pros and cons of the laser headlight. Well, they are energy efficient. They have the highest brightness and the longest lighting distance. On the other hand, they are extremely expensive, not universal and generate a lot of heat. So these are the choices for you available in the market. So to sum it up all and to give you an understanding of the comparison between the headlights we discussed today, here are some approximate values. So as you see, if we take an halogen of 55 watt, it will give you a lumen intensity of 1000 to 1200 and can give you a lighting distance of maximum 100 meters. Also, the life span of a halogen bulb can be somewhere around 500 hours. Whereas an HID of 35 watts is three times brighter than the halogen lamp, gives you three times lighting distance and has 3000 hours of lifespan. A 30 watt LED can match the lumen intensity of an HID, will give you almost the same lighting distance as the HID and will have 30,000 hours, which is 10 times the lifespan of an HID. And last but not the least, the laser headlights, which we cannot use as of today, can actually give you 12,000 lumens of light in just 15 watt of power consumption and the lighting distance is as long as 600 meters, which is actually beneficial for high speed cars. And the lifespan of a laser headlight is more than 50,000 hours. Now let's get to our question, which headlight is the best for you? What do you think? 
well the answer is very simple it is the led headlights now many of you might say that changing headlights is illegal in india and i agree with you it is illegal in india because people do not understand which kind of a led to install in your reflector or projector and it ends up blinding the person coming from the other side so if you choose wisely and i hope with this video you have understood how to choose the right led for you don't forget to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and family whosoever are thinking of changing their headlights or would like to know the choices available in today's market if you have any queries suggestions or questions you can hit us in the comment section below or you can get in touch with us on instagram facebook and twitter i hope this video was really helpful for you we'll meet you in the next video till then stay home and be safe bye bye